It's 2023, baby! <laughs> Another year of Paleobites. Another year of awesomeness. Uh, unless, for whatever reason, I decide to put this show on a different hiatus like I did with my other show, The Ritwit. You never know, this show is not my income. This show does not make a profit, guys! I do this as a hobby! But if you'd like the show to make a profit, you can subscribe to my Patreon at patreon.com slash MatthewDonald. There you can find bonus content for Paleobites, a little bit for the Ritwit, but mostly Paleobites. We usually discuss pop culture featuring prehistoric animals for the Paleobites Patreon. And this month we're talking about, once again, everyone's favorite dinosaur movie, Pacific Rim. They said that the Kaiju trial one was the dinosaur, so it counts. And yes, we talked about this last January, but we're talking about it again this January. And every January from here on out. Because, damn it, it's an awesome movie, it's my favorite movie, and it's the best dinosaur movie of all time. So check it out. Links in the description for you can sign up to the Patreon. Thank you for your support. Have a lovely day and a wonderful and happy new year! Lore. Growl. Snarl. Bellow. Welcome to Paleo Bites, the podcast that's prehistoric and yet progressively modern. Hey, how does a non-binary velociraptor kill its prey? They slash them. It's <laughs> <laughs> my pet. <laughs> oh man, my name's Matthew Tom. And each week on a rotating series of guest co-hosts talk about and rate a genius of prehistoric animal, be it dinosaur, mammal, arthropod, and so on. This week I'm joined by someone who I'm very thankful to have here, even though he has conjunctivitis. It's been a Reagan! Hey, yeah, everyone. I'm also, I don't know if it's separate or related, but I'm also a little bit sick at the same time as having that, although I guess that counts as sick anyway, so you can probably hear my nose yeah, being all nasally. Don't worry, I've taken nose drops, it'll clear oh, up. Yeah, yeah, you're just full of gunk and other stuff, but yeah. Uh, it sucks. Uh, yeah, I don't know, like, because conjunctive eyes is, is pink eye, right? Isn't that what it is? Yeah, although it's not the type of pink eye that South Park led me to believe pink eye was, which is where you get fecal matter in your eyes. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I never saw that episode of South Park. I think Park. that might be something different, though, but that's what I thought it was. Ah, uh, man, it's sad to me that Colorado, my home state, is best known for South Park. <laughs> like, as the home of South Park. It's also known for the I mean, again, it's, it's a good show. It's just, uh... <laughs> yeah. Because, like... A lot of people, like, I don't know, like, whenever someone says, like, oh, you can't joke about anything more, I always point them out to South Park. Because it's like, you can, you just gotta be smart about it. Uh, like, there's even South between... Park is struggling, like, some of the stuff that you see in the modern world, whether it's just, it's stuff that you would have seen in South Park 20 years ago, and they're like, this is reality, we can't make fun of it, we don't know how. <laughs> exactly. There's so many different sides to everything. But it's yeah. just, my point is, is like, like, there's a difference between a racist joke and a joke about racism. Uh, so on a completely different note, uh, we were talking about like um, Jurassic Park and Jurassic World, specifically Hammond versus Masrani, uh, mm. before we start recording. And here is my dinosaur related question. I'm going to ask you. Uh, I thought of a good one here. So yeah. you have you're remaking the movie Jurassic Park. It's a shot for shot remake. Absolutely nothing changed. The only thing that's changed is that all the species are different. They're different versions. So what species do you choose? And also, I know you. So I'm going to add the caveat that you cannot replace the T-Rex with Giganotosaurus. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. That's um, blasphemy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. Oh, by the gods, that's a tough one. Uh, so let's start with the Brachiosaurus at the beginning. Like The Brachiosaurus I'd probably replace stay? with um, maybe Diplodocus or maybe a Patasaurus from the book version just because they're... Not quite so tall up there, uh, but they're still quite a big animal. But they seem like they'd be a bit easier to manage from a security standpoint. Like Brachiosaurus potentially trying to stomp its way over a fence or something. I don't know. Yeah, Patasaurus would be easier for sure. Yeah, and that yeah. makes sense if we close with the book. Then I think I'd just go bigger, and it'd be like some sort of Titanosaur, like Argentinosaurus or Patagotitan. <laughs> I was gonna <laughs> just... say Argentinosaurus, but that wasn't discovered at the time of um, either the movie or the novel. So I want it to be like. Different species, but once engine would have known about. Oh, okay. Well, then never mind then. I guess if it was a shot for shot remake, then it would be still taking place in the 90s, so they wouldn't have replaced the T Rex and Gignosaurus then, anyways. Uh, okay, so let's see. What's the, what's the next species they see? I guess the Parasaurolophus in the river. Um, I'd probably make that a uh, Iguanodon because of Disney's dinosaur. Right, that makes sense. And then I think. After that, think it's the. Another, um, uh, it's the Triceratops. Yeah, oh. the Triceratops. I mean, technically. And also the Raptors. You don't see them mm, either. But if you, you go them. by pure visuals, we don't actually see the Raptors. We just see the carnage and the noise, which used right. to scare the hell out of me yeah. as a kid. 
oh, no, absolutely, that poor cow. <laughs> Oh God! You don't see it fully mm. until like when the movie's nearly over, but you feel their presence the entire time, though. Yeah, because like, everyone's terrified. Like even Dennis wasn't dumb enough to turn their fences off. Right. Okay. So next up is the Triceratops. Yeah. Uh, so Triceratops I guess maybe we're make... I'd replace with Stegosaurus because again, book and I can't think of anything to make else. it more novel accurate. Then so uh, okay. Then they have Triceratops the in the book too, but that you don't really directly see them. Uh, okay. Next up, I think is the T Rex. Yep. So. What big carnivore you're replacing? The Tyrannosaurus Rex I would replace with... It's like Acro was known since mm. the 50s. Uh, I might replace it with... Um, Acrocanthosaurus? Allosaurus? No, that's... No, um, Albertosaurus, because it's like well, it's known, but it's not as well known, especially not back then amongst the public, but it's still a Tyrannosaurid. But yeah. it's sleeker and it's lighter. Like, Tyrannosaurus is a lot more robust in comparison. Right, because, like, yeah, that's the thing. It does make it different. Because, like, as much as you can say, oh, I'll just replace it with a Tarbosaurus. Mm. I'm like, that's kind of cheating. Because then it's basically the same yeah. animal. I mean, <laughs> like... Albertosaurus is so, yeah. closely related to, if not ancestral to Terrius. There's only a few million years between the two of them appearing. But I guess if I wasn't going to be Albertosaurus, right, it might right. be Gorgosaurus. Yeah, Gorgosaurus, the Spletosaurus, maybe, like, yeah. It's like... one of the Appalachian um, subcontinent... Right. Um, Tyrannosaurids. I don't know a whole lot about them, though, beyond the right. names, and that they were more lift. Also, I, f I feel like since Albertosaurus is so much smaller, it's like a half or even a third of the size of T-Rex, uh, at least weight-wise. Maybe my idea for it is that rather than just be one, I break it out, it's like two or three. But yeah, I'd have the whole buck and doe dynamic going on with them, since in the novel there was like, you had the... There was the, there was the baby T-Rex. Well, not the baby, the, there was a juvenile. Yeah, the baby which up. kills the um, yeah. tour guide guy and public relations manager, Ed Regis, when he gets freaked out by um, leeches on him. Mm -hmm. But And yeah, yeah. it would also make the whole Jeep chase yeah, scene, right, right, where yeah. it's like, whether it's chasing Malcolm, Ellie, and uh, Muldoon in the Jeep, um, a lot yeah, more yeah. believable, because you could make a, a smaller animal believably faster without optic tricks yeah an albertosaurus would definitely be able to catch up with that jeep for yeah. a lot longer of a time and it so. could duck under the log next up is oh wait, no there's <laughs> there's three left uh, the next one is dilophosaurus dilophosaurus i'd probably replace with like coelophysis or something or um some kind of yeah. around the same period give or take a few million years or an error in this case but still pretty close but just something primitive and light think... that would have potentially have interesting features, like proto feathers or something. Right. Here's what I would think. Mm. I mean, I, I think that's good too. But one thing I do, uh, I might do Truodon because in Jurassic Park canon, Truodon's also poisonous. It's just a different type of poison compared yeah, to. And it's a brood parasite of sorts. All right. Next up is the Gallimimus. Hmm. Because I feel like replacing it with just another Ornithomimid is kind of lame. I might replace it with like. like um... Heterodontosaurus or something, you know, yeah, or I was thinking something like, just something gracial that was smaller than, say, the Iguanodon, so it's quite fast. Yeah, like something like that, or Dryosaurus or something, I could see that, yeah. Yeah. So you can still have the stampede thing, but... Right, right. Distinct, and then... Because Ornithomimids are boring. Yeah, no, I guess they really kind of are. They're much more interesting now that they have feathers, <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, but I mean, they all generally tend to look the same in reconstructions. They do, they definitely do. Uh, but anyways, uh, finally, uh, the Velociraptors. The Velociraptors, hmm. Well, I can't cop out and say I'd have them replaced with Neanderthals, because then that's not Jurassic Park. Uh, no, but that's a very interesting choice. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trolling there. Um, How about, like, I was thinking maybe Herrerasaurus or something? Or Yeah, well, they were planning to replace the Raptors with the Herrerasaurus and the um, Telltale Law. I think I remember that, yeah, so that's what I was thinking too, yeah. So. Yeah, because they, were... they jump on a unfinished roller coaster ride and chase Jerry um, and his daughter. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cool. Mm. Uh, wait, wait, did the Herrerasaurus jump with the unfinished roller coaster? Yeah, like they're on the track and trying to bite at them. Oh, like, they're not in they the train. Oh, and they're stuff. not riding in the roller coaster train. <laughs> no, they like, they'll jump on it and like attack uh, them gotcha. in it or um, hop on the front of the track and like try to swipe at them from a nearby bit. Okay, well, that's that's a little bit less silly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can see that. Also, uh, dinosaurs riding roller coasters is dumber than raptors riding motorcycles. At least that was funny when it was edited. And, and right, the right. I was going to say, like, a dinosaur riding, that's a bit too much. <laughs> but yeah. Herrerasaurus also is about the same size as the Jurassic Park Velociraptors, if not a bit bigger. So. Yes. So. And again, another primitive animal, so and not very well known um, in terms of cinema going and that, so it would be an interesting addition. Yep. Anyways, well, and well, you let's don't have to worry about the killer claw, which they always talk about in the films, but you only ever seen it actually used for killing in the third film. That's true. That's true. When it 
gonna gets on the back of Udesky. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because mm. pretty much all it ever gets used for is like the iconic, like the tapping, tapping on the ground yeah, to make it seem scary. But other than that, no, not really. Yeah, mm. but yeah. Anyways, all right. Well, that's our new official uh, shot for shot remake, except for new species. So, and I guess it couldn't be shot for <laughs> shot because the new species would react differently. But yeah, but. Uh, anyways, so uh, if I was ever going to do a remake of it, I would make it a bit closer to the novels, but I would keep the movie's um, characterization, so it would still be like so not a um, mean Hammond then, <laughs> like yeah, it would be film Hammond, but he would have some of um, novel Hammond's flaws, like that he um, not that he's like um, doesn't want to hear things, but he's already so invested in the park and he likes his animals so much, he doesn't like he shut he still shuts down Blue's idea to make them safer and stuff. Right, right, exactly. So, I uh so speaking of none of this, unless you want to replace the raptors with forest rockus, <laughs> we're talking about forest rockus <laughs> or rockos, like forest rockos or whatever. Uh yeah. it's a big famous terror- for being in Walking with Beasts, the yes, yes. South America episode. Exactly. Although very very out of time, though. I'll talk about that here in a yeah. bit. Cuz uh, wasn't that Titanus that was at that point yes, in time yes, or it was, was that just in North America? It was Titanus, but that was also just in North America. Yeah, so exactly. Uh, now, now with a name like Forest Rockos, something that like sounds really cool and has the has even has like the word Horus in it, you might think, oh, what does this awesome sounding name mean? It doesn't mean anything awesome. It means wrinkle bearer. <laughs> it's because of its wrinkled <laughs> jaw surface and its bones. <laughs> like, so there you go. It is a forest rocket, though, colloquially known as terror birds, an extinct group of flightless predatory birds that were the top predators of South America for millions of years. And apparently, they're quite closely related to the Caracara or some kind of... Um, Are you sure you're not just confusing that with Future is Wild? <laughs> but Terra Killer? But, I don't know, let me check. Uh, the animal it's supposed to um, have evolved from or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Hold on, let me check. Hold on. Caracara. Oh! Okay, here we go. They're related to uh, the Caria, which include the modern day Serimas, which are like... Ah, that's what they're called. Yeah, yeah, that's what they're more related. The Caryaformes are, like, in the branching, they're, like, adjacent to falconiforms, falcons, and ah. also to to parrots, like little Lyra over here, and songbirds. <laughs> they're, they're all part of the Australaves, a recently defined clade of birds that includes, like, parrots, falcons, and uh, Serima's extinct mm-hmm. terror birds. So it's more closely related to parrots and falcons than it is to owls and, like, um, mm. vultures and stuff. I didn't know that. That's quite interesting. Apparently, now I just recently learned through this that falcons are not closely related to hawks. <laughs> it's okay. Hey? What do you know? Okay, that's a new one. Yeah. Bird of prey is not technically uh, a group of animals. It's more like a distinction of like a type of animal, like kind of like a tree. Yeah, I guess it's the same like with fish. Fish technically also includes sharks right. and um, groups are fish, but might not be in terms of relations, like lobefin fish that gave rise to amphibians and us eventually probably weren't too closely related to the ray fish. Right, right, exactly. So, yeah. Oh, that's... Yeah. I mean, they might have been, uh, I don't you know. You learn something new every it's day. It's a pretty major limb difference in the fins. Uh, see, this is why I do this show, because I get to learn stuff, too. <laughs> so, size, 7.5 to 9.3 feet, slash 2.5 to 3 meters tall, 290 to 330 pounds, 130 to 150 kilograms. So... A pretty big bird, but actually quite lightly built. Well, that's, but most birds are. Like, mo- again, most birds and most dinosaurs are, too. Compared, Like, they're not nearly as dense as us mammals. Yeah, because of the way their bones are. Their bones are paradoxically very hollow, but uh, but the also lattice network strong. in them... Yeah, it makes it very strong. That's why um, pterosaurs, which have a similar method, mm-hmm. can get so damn big, because um, having those big skin membranes... Yeah. Um, actually makes them um, as more efficient than feathers for lifting an animal that like big. Like Quetzalcoatlus, I don't know, it might, this might have changed in the time, but like it has that 40 foot wingspan, yet it doesn't weigh much more than a really big person. <laughs> like, so. Hey, yeah, that's amazing for an animal the size of a private passenger plane, like the ones that can fit like maybe 20 people. That might be different now, too. I remember hearing that when I was a kid, so I don't know if that's different now. Uh, but it does make me feel a bit bad about myself that, like, if I only, I only need to gain a bit more weight and then I'd weigh as much as a forest rock is. Yeah. <laughs> so. And they're an animal that probably would have been, or at least their later relatives like Titanus from North America and whatever ones were around closer to the time Homo sapiens showed yeah. up in the New World. Right. Um, would have been terrifying to be chased by if you ignore that it's cinematic because... Um, 
10,000 BC, I think it was, has a scene where they attack yes. the Cro-Magnon hero in his group in the forest. Yeah, based on that depiction, where they show it, I mean, you only see glimpses of it, because you don't really see it, it's mostly hidden in the brush and other stuff, but it looks like it's based more off of Forest Rockus than Titanus, because Titanus has a much bigger head. Either way, like, so, I mean, they're a bit too much like Jurassic Park's Raptor depictions. I mean, like, I don't mind it. I think it's jumping, cool. But also, 10,000 BC is a fantasy. Yeah, it's terrifying. And it's in the bamboos. Like, using a, that as a scene, cinema, have a blimmin' um, Quetzalcoatlus Atlas or a related animal like, uh, what's its cousin on Hectag Island called? Oh, um, has to Tagos Teropteryx or something. Has to has to get yeah. This, yeah, like, getting chased by them through the long grass would be terrifying because they can see you. It's almost... Or your movement. It's almost like... Imagine you're walking in this other... It's like the, the spider in Kong Skull Island. You're walking and you don't realize that it's been hovering above you the whole time. <laughs> like, not even hovering, just walking above yeah. you, and you're between its legs. <laughs> like, it was a carnivore, obviously. Time... Okay, this is what I was talking about. So that, that saber teeth episode of Walking with Beast took place just one million years ago. It actually lived early to mid-Miocene, so... Tw yeah, it was a Miocene yeah, creature, so not a... Place the OC in Yeah, so it's, it's 20 to 13 million years ago. <laughs> so it's quite a big difference. Uh, quite a big difference. Yeah. All right, it was in Argentina. It was described in 1887. Pop culture appearances, as we said, it appeared in Walking Beasts. And like we said, Titanus would, would have been alive then, but it was in North America. It was also in the movie 10,000 BC. And then also it's in the video games Ark Survival Evolved, Jurassic Park Builder, and Jurassic World the Game. The non-avian dinosaurs might have gone extinct at the end of the Cretaceous period, but that didn't mean dinosaurs in general were no longer here, nor did it mean they didn't dominate as top predators in certain areas. In South America, a group of theropod dinosaurs continued to rule long past the Cretaceous, stalking and roaming across the land and running on two powerful clawed legs as they preyed upon smaller animals all around them like in their Mesozoic heydays. Except these dinosaurs did not have teeth, but a powerful hawk-like beak, and they did not have tailbones, so they held their long necks vertically to keep their balance. These were the forest rockets, mm. known informally as terror birds. And they... Technically, didn't have arms, but um, like in terms of wings. But Titanus seems to have evolved uh, T Rex-like arms. Yeah, I mean they had one claw on them rather than two, but yeah, still kind of like the Alvisorids. Mm, but it seems to have used them to potentially hook onto things. Going on some theories, I feel right. That makes like this is the last giant land-based theropod dinosaurs predators known in Earth's his history up until the Caracillers evolved in five million years. Of the future is wild as anything to believe. <laughs> Anyway, so this episode appears in, as well as addition having it out of place from a temporal standpoint, also posted the now outdated theory that the forest rockets were outcompeted by the mammalian predators that came down from North America when the two continents collided in the late Pliocene. In actuality, hmm. the two predator groups coexisted rather easily, fulfilling different predatory niches. While the newly arrived dogs, cats, and bears were good at ambushing, forest rockets was built for speed and could catch fleeing prey farther than any mammal predator could reach. And because of that speed, they could make a good living as scavengers if they absolutely had exactly. to. Exactly. Exactly. So, in reality, what probably killed them was the Ice Age, as their extinction uh, as a family seemed to coincide directly with its arrival. It probably put an increased pressure on them, and then the mm. fact that they were in a similar niche to certain mammals, then that would be where the competition might have screwed them exactly, over. Exactly, exactly. But another thing also the forest rockets had in common with their non-avian dinosaur ancestors was a specialized second toe, which had fewer phalanges and stronger resistance... Uh, meaning that it could easily be held off the ground and used for killing like dromaeosaurs, albeit with a lesser degree of specialization. Oh, well, I actually didn't know that. Actually, this feature is shared with the modern Cerema birds, the closest breeding relatives of the forest rockets. Huh. So, in some way, we still have large land-based predatory dinosaurs to this day, although Cerema's are still capable of flight to just prefer to be on land, uh, which I get. Air is high and scary, ground is low and safe. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Anyways, yeah, that's... Forest Rockus, like, it's pretty cool, but... Honestly, not a whole lot to say about it, really. It's more the group. Yeah, that's what I think. Forest Rockus in like, particular... the individuals aren't remarkable, but the species, um, the group is. I mean, like... Because just like ground sloths and, um... Oh, what are they called? The big, um, armadillos? Yeah. Um, the Glyptodontids? The, yeah, the Glyptodontids. They march north. Well, and also, keep in mind, like, since this lived so much earlier than that, and the condition of the others, like, what would it have preyed on? Like, as well as... I guess the, the Lyptoturns, which is what Macrocania was, it would have been... There would have been versions hmm. of that back then that it would have preyed on. But also, like, was it like the Toxodons? Like, it could have preyed on those. Yeah, and South America said, I think they're called Pseudohippids, those um, convergently evolved horse-like animals, which actually got the, um, 
one toed thing well before um, horses right, themselves. Right, right. So there's different things that could have preyed so on. So they might have run them down because they seem like they would have been blimmin' fast. Right. So yeah, it's interesting to think of what a forest rockets would have been in its actual environment rather than the one, the, like the pseudo Pleistocene one that they put it in <laughs> in Walking with Beasts. Heck. Given their height and necks, if they were going for areas with particularly low-hanging trees where that might have had South American prompts and they could probably just jump up at them and um, pick them out of the branches. Were there, South Amer- were there New World primates back then? I wasn't... Hold on. Uh, let me let me think. Hold on. Okay, New World primates. Maybe not for Forest Rikers itself, but for the group, right. sure. I'm just trying to think, like, when did New World primates become a thing? New World monkeys. I think it's about the... Ten, um, 30, 20 million years ago. Oh, yeah, range. yeah. No, so yeah, Forest Rockets would have found them, because yeah, it said early Augustine to Holocene. So they, they branched out from the Simiforms about 40 million years ago. Yeah, so that's interesting. Okay, cool. I didn't know that. For some reason, I thought they were far more recent, but I don't know why. Maybe I'm just thinking of humans. <laughs> but, uh, uh. I get information wrong like that, and it's not a big deal. Right. All right, so let's rate Forest Rockets 165 million. Honestly, I'm going to give it like 55 or 56 million. I think it's really, really cool. Uh, and the fact that it's like maybe even sixty million, like the fact that it's like basically a theropod dinosaur, but in the Cenozoic, yeah. is is yeah. You basically just stole my thunder there. I was going to give it sixty million. I mean, yeah, fair <laughs> enough. I mean, when the rating works, the rating works. Yeah, it's basically a theropod, but not a theropod. Yeah, I mean, it is a theropod, but I mean, it's basically like the land land based flightless top predator theropod, mm. like the like in the Cretaceous. Mm. But it doesn't have the classic appearances, you know. It doesn't have the tail. It doesn't have teeth, and it doesn't have proper right. arms. But yeah, again, like all dinosaurs are still technically theropod dinosaurs. Like Lyra right here, who keeps chirping that I'm gonna try and edit as best I can, but might not get everything out. You're still a theropod dinosaur, aren't you? Technically. <laughs> uh, may- Maybe you should threaten to turn into a drum set. That might make it quiet. <laughs> oh, did you not like that, Lyra? <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Well, that's it for this week. Uh, if you want to get hold of the show and contact me, uh, blah 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 blah. We all know this stuff at this point. I don't know. I'm just gonna skip it. You all know the stuff, and if you don't, you'll listen to the next episode. So, if this is at the end of every episode of Paleo Bites, just rawr. I don't know why I'm barking. I meant to be doing like a weird sort of, that weird growly chirp thing that they do. <laughs> what the hell was that I just did? I don't know. It's gross, though. Anyways, bye. See you, everyone.